let's quickly move to today's agenda. As I had told you, the topic today is invitations and replies. And we have been calling this so far, CBSC had called this as an advanced writing skill. But this year, when the CBSC had introduced its curriculum for the academic year 2022-23, there is a slight change from this. So we, the CBSC calls the advanced writing skill as creative writing skills from this year onwards. So a lot of uh, emphasis has been given in the writing section. So uh, initially or in the previous years, writing was not considered extensively except for the amount of topics that we had. But this year, there is a reduction in portions and specifications regarding how to write and how to teach children have been clearly mentioned in the curriculum. So you can go through that. And today's agenda, I'm going to target on the pedagogical skills, especially in teaching writing in general. That will be my first agenda. Then I will move on to to list out the syllabus prescribed for class 12 under the CWS, the creative writing section. We will then move on to guidelines and content. Content as such, value points or essentials required for today's topic. We will then have a question answer session. Uh, this was actually, I planned this question answer session as a kind of a protocol. Uh, but yesterday, we, uh, we had a question answer session at the end of it because it was a single topic. But today's topic is very extensive. So at the end of every variety of invitation, I thought I will pause because let's not carry over. If the first type itself, if we get a clarity about what, what is the format, what is the content, and what is the expression, I think uh, it will help us to learn the rest of the uh, types even better, to understand them better. So... As, as I had shared earlier, uh, the workshop or the topic, nothing is actually very as important as the last point as PGT's evaluation and feedback that we provide to children on their paper is very, very important. So that is going to be my, as usual, like I had shared yesterday, is definitely going to be my target today also. So we are going to look at creative writing skills in general. One minute. One minute. Okay. So as teachers, we always face innumerable challenges when we teach writing skills in English, especially for class 12, because we are always pressurized for time. Our teachings are mostly motivated by exam-driven product-based writing. Assignments that, mostly the assignments that we give, uh, encourage students to reproduce what they have learned in the classroom. Yes, for class 12, I agree, it is very, very important. But as a language teacher, isn't writing an important component of our language curriculum? So how do you basically teach English? Do you help? <clears throat> One minute. I don't know why my PPT is creating a problem today. Yeah, fine. So do you help your students write multiple drafts of a text or do you just ask them to submit the final versions? So what exactly do we do? Let's, let's do an introspection, right? So do we teach them to write a lot of, give them a lot of questions and then ask them to submit the answers alone? Is that, has that been our style, right? Or do you only provide a final score on students writing? So whatever they have written, do you only provide uh, the, uh, the, the input as your feedback only in the end of it? Or do you provide it in between? As they write, do you provide it? So do you pay attention to the type of writing, uh, the kind of writing, the type of question that, you're, that your children are preparing? For example, if it is an email letter or, or writing for websites, blogging, uh, or writing poems or essays or editorials, or is the focus only on the language style? That is grammar, vocabulary, and spelling. When we have a curriculum to faithfully follow, we do have time constraints and availability of resources will largely determine what you can and cannot do. As teachers, we also have a certain level of control. 
over how we want to teach our students how to write and to facilitate their growth as writers. So definitely it is in our hands right where to make children learn to write english with confidence the language definitely needs the, uh, that kind of attention so as i told you earlier we do face unique challenges in when we teach writing skills so how do we overcome such challenges so there are there are a lot of unique challenges which can be overcome with proper planning and execution so despite a lot of limitations there are efficient teachers who can implement certain secret formula that they adopt in the approach when they teach writing and they prepare students not only for the exam point of view but but allow them to face the the global world making them able to write a range of tasks instead of just memorization and reproduction in exams so in order to build an expertise in such a pedagogic skill so we teachers need to be familiar with the range of the pedagogical options available to them so the oldest method that we would have learned in our bed classrooms is the product approach the pro this kind of an approach focuses the child to learn the output finally right so what is ultimately suppose we teach invitation we teach notices we teach letter writing how to write a letter how to write a notice that is the only objective in this particular approach so usually we'll do that right the next approach is a genre approach when it comes to language teaching what happens is we tell them for a letter this is the way to write for an article this is the way to write this is the style to be followed that is the style not to be followed so we try to we try to differentiate the different types of writing based on the types of it so that is a genre approach where if a child is taught to write one type of letter the child ultimately learns to write different types of letters but what happens is the base structure is the same the child cannot implement further if you give a hard question the child cannot implement further so there there that there is an issue with that particular problem too we then have the final one the process approach the process approach is a time consuming approach but actually an effective approach where you show a sample and then the team, then the student learns it and then um, one minute is the ppt clear ma'am yes yes ma'am no, very clear yes, right. so so what happens is it takes time for the children to uh, to learn to finish their answer along with the teacher so many times even though we do not know them by name product or genre or process approach i think invariably we would have followed one of these styles am i right am i right teachers yes no okay so what i am going to tell you next is the model that i have incorporated which i learned from my mentor right so it is called the process genre approach this approach takes account of different steps for instance for instance preparation modeling planning joint construction independent uh, <clears throat> construction and finally revising All right so this is very as the as these steps very clearly say they are they are basically self explanatory it's a combination of all the three different approaches that you see on the yellow side of the screen so we i we have taken initially one uh, a few parts from each approach and try to put it under a particular thing so preparation without preparation we cannot step inside the classroom so children ask me ma'am for you it is easy but the, but the actual point is um the actual point here is in spite of having years of experience still without going through the textbook because every batch is different for us it might not be the same kind of a batch always so we always we need to cross check that particular uh, uh, thing and we need to prepare ourselves and even though it is a known concept it's a known topic that we teach year after year preparation becomes very important because it depends upon the kind of children that we have in each classroom we need to prepare a model we need to tell we need to uh, we need to prepare and plan a model so how am i going to take it up and then planning automatically comes with a model so am i showing them a sample am i showing them a ppt so what kind of example am i going to do that and joint construction you don't put the entire sample on the board take the first step what is the first line what is the i think 
joint construction is the kind of pattern that I did yesterday for note making. I said, I went with the title, then I went with the side headings, I went back to the title, side headings, and then sub point. So when, when we did the sub point, again, I went back to the title, side heading, and sub sub points. So you need to make the child realize the relativity, connectivity, and that is what enhances independent construction. So when you try to do that to the children, right? So automatically you actually help them to learn confidence and courage to step into other ventures also. And definitely revising, right? So revising and editing, they need to do that before they, before they decide that this is the final draft of what I have. These are, uh, these kind of approaches are easily available. This is the kind of flow chart that when you, when you try to browse for process genre approaches, this is what you get. It gives us a proper uh, planned structure. Though these are all techniques that are easily available on Google, we just need to adapt ourselves what would, what would require. And uh, from my personal experience, the process genre approach has always been very helpful during the, I mean, during my classroom teaching. So I thought I would just recommend the same thing for, for you people also. Now getting back to the second part of our agenda. So I just finished with the pedagogical skills that one needs to keep improvising when we teach writing to class 11 and 12 students. So the second part of today's agenda is to give you a brief up about, um, one minute. Okay, just to give a brief of about the CWS section. So basically, we have short writing task and long writing task. I'm not going to confuse you people about what was earlier and what was what is a change brought now because the curriculum states that. And uh, probably you all being newcomers to CBSC, we would ignore whatever was there in the old old times. We will just take what whatever is applicable for us this year. So all short writing tasks are for 50 words and for five marks. And all short writing tasks will be done within a box only. Whether it is notices or invitations and replies, all short writing tasks are to be done. The format has to be within, the answer has to be within the format called box. So they are, they are, the maximum word limit for short writing task is 50 words. And then we move on to long writing tasks. We have, uh, Two, uh, two questions here. Those, again, the questions are five marks each. And we have letters as our third question. Under letter category, we have job application with, with bio data and letter to the editor. So though the curriculum says job application with bio data and then letter to the editor, I would advise you to start with letter to the editor first and then move on to job application. Do not introduce job application because letter writing needs a proper construction and uh, experience. So introduce let letter to the editor first and then uh, go on with job application. The fourth question is and with, an int, uh, with a choice of either article or report. Usually long writing task. In class 11th, you have speech or debate. So here you have article or report. All long writing tasks are ranged between 120 to 150 words. Anything less than 120 will lead to penalty. Same as anything more than 150. We always, in a board evaluation, we always have a buffer of 10 to 15 words, either plus or minus, it doesn't matter. 10 to 15 words buffer you can always give. Please don't allow the child to count the number of words that they are doing. Uh, when they are writing their assignments and all, let them prepare, let them know what is their font size and how many words would they occupy, yeah, their regular handwriting would occupy a line and let them mentally learn it. There is no point because I remember way back in matriculation and state board, we have this pressy writing where we teach children to count and write. That is the, All that is not applicable here. So you could very easily do away with it. Fine, so as I told you, all questions have internal choice, right? So again, I on this particular uh, issue, I would like to tell you, uh, kindly avoid giving internal choice if it is an internal exam, like mid midterm or a revision exam and all, please avoid giving internal choice because when we give a midterm exam or a revision exam, we have very limited number of topics for the prescribed exam. So do not allow the child to take the liberty to choose between 
the two questions have rigid strict portions and uh, do not give internal choice but whenever it is a terminal exam definitely it has to follow the protocol the blueprint prescribed by the cbsc so let's get into the main topic so we are going to do invitations and replies it's a very extensive topic uh, i would request you not to note down anything because my ppt covers all the value points that you that you require to note down so if you uh, i will pass on the ppt also today in the group so it it would be better if i could have your participation as such so why did i show these images of course we are not going to do these kind of invitations at all right words like sangeet mehendi and all or all indian words we don't do that so please tell your children that indianized words or hindi words or tamil local words or whatever is their language generally we say mehendi bharat muhurtam these are all the words so i ask them to kindly avoid because this is a language paper this is an english paper the entire answer has to be only in english and the reason why i have these kind of printed copies is for the child to realize that it is a printed version of writing skill so editing striking scratching editing it and writing it on top is definitely not acceptable so let the child know how to present her invitation the invitation has to be visually appealing and attractive so even a double line border is enough we are not expecting artistic portrayal here a double line border makes it creative that is more than enough for us to um, i mean do this uh, do this particular answer so again another image because you are invited so this is just to make uh, make us remember that there are two types of invitations we call informal and formal invitation so under formal invitation we have two types of uh, in two types of invitation one is card type and the other one is letter type under informal there is only one type of um, invitation so nothing uh nothing no different types under informal of, of course apart from this we do have replies also in card type itself we have two types of invitation one for family and one for organization the content and value points are are very unique they are different from each other but whereas the format and expression tone and style for formal happens to be similar and for informal it has it ha it, it, it seems to be similar <clears throat> so what are the learning objectives and outcomes from this particular uh, uh, topic right so children understand the importance of invitations and replies in social life it's a social efficacy right if someone invites us it's mandatory that we need to respond back so it helps them in making in making their making arrangements for the function or or anything else so uh, i think uh, slowly with the with the world becoming very smaller because of the internet um we we have we have started to forget our value system so invitations are not only reminders it is a social etiquette basically so when someone invites it's mandatory that we respond to so the children also learn to draft and design when i say draft and design they are able to identify what when should they write a formal invitation when should they write a informal invitation so drafting comes under informal designing comes under formal they also understand the different formats right so how do you how, how how is your expression different with respect to different types of invitations for various occasions so here we have type 1 under card type invitations so formal invitations so basically as i told you card type is divided into two categories the first one is where you invite a large number of people to a particular event for example questions can be framed on the following occasions when we have a school function annual function prize distribution school day right parents day uh, uh, children's day celebration valedictory function so we could have activities probably um uh, a, se a seminar exhibitions right so not only school functions and activities we, we we can also have inauguration birthday housewarming wedding exhibition seminars whether it is a public seminar or or within within a particular organization 
that doesn't matter but the the content style and format and all happen to be the same one so all card type invitations are to be neatly written within a box i had told you earlier in no part of the answer we are supposed to use any short forms or abbreviations remember the language papers so even a usage of and is supposed not to be allowed the expression should be strictly formal third person only however in certain cases for example in family functions we can definitely use you your or he are allowed simple present tense is a tense that is allowed avoid punctuation while arranging the words of the invitation in an attractive manner usually we have a ha glass shape structure and all so as they are arranging they cannot write it in a paragraph they cannot write in running sentences but any attractive manner we all know how invitations are written and i will be showing you samples also so while they do that they need not entertain punctuation mark like comma hyphen at all so what exactly should we include in a uh, in a formal card type invitation like i told you there are two types of card invitations one is where we have we have organizational functions like in a school or an association or a, or in an office or in a community like that so we you could tell the children that there are two types of invitations under card type one where there is a chief guest involved kind of invitation where this other one where there where we need not have a chief guest so for family function we generally we don't have chief guest so that kind of difference you could tell your children so what should the first type so as i told you uh, invitations where we we need to incorporate uh, chief guest so what are the content points for such invitations we have to definitely start with the details of the host we need to have social etiquette words that combines the host and the occasion so as i have told you if you see point number 1 2 3 4 right right from details of the host till date time venue and address can be in one sentence structure it can be in one sentence structure so details of the host social etiquette words of invitation the name of the occasion uh, ms crystal mary please mute your mic thank you thank you and date time and venue so these four inputs can be in one sentence and then the next sentence will be the name of the chief guest the educational qualification or professional detail any one thing depending upon our layout right we could include any one thing or if you want you can teach both to the children let them choose any one value point is enough see whether we are going to give an educational qualification to the chief guest or the professional detail we are adding details to that particular person so any one is more than enough even if you teach them to write to yes it's acceptable only so what is he going to do in that particular function is he going to preside over the function is he going to distribute prizes is he is he going to inaugurate the function or is he going to conduct the workshop or is he going to be a chief uh, is is he is he going to be is he going to give a presidential address so what is this person going to do in that particular invitation has to be shared also the next thing is uh, the order the order of the invitation can be followed in the same way so i'm giving you the fluent fluency also the next part is when we have covered these two uh, sentences the second one that the third one that we need to remember is the condition so for conditions you need to uh, i mean we uh, one minute yeah for condition we we need to give a condition related to the event right so this is the left hand bottom see ultimately this left hand side or right hand side it doesn't matter it has to be below the main invite because these are all additional information for this particular type so if you could say rsvp and give a phone number or you could say admit only to you could say invite is a must be seated by 5:45 pm if you are going to have important honorable delegates like a supreme court justice or we are going to have a honorable minister then definitely they cannot walk in royally late so we can give them instructions like this so this is one side of the format or the other side we need to write program overlies which means uh, the actual thing when when we look into a into a formal function like this usually the program of that particular uh, function will be printed on the other side of the card but we are not going to ask the children to write all those things our invitation stops here 
but program overlays is a part of the format of the invitation. Any doubts? No doubt. So this is a sample card type that I'm going to show you. Okay, so we have this question. Your school is organizing the prestigious KVS national level social science exhibition in its premises. Draft an invitation card in not more than 50 words with all essential details. So as I had told you in my previous, uh, yeah, in my previous uh, slide, it says details of the whole social etiquette words, occasion, date, time, and venue. I said this is a first part of my uh, invitation. So do you see that here? So we have the details of the host. So the host is KVS Public School Bangalore. Takes immense pleasure inviting one and all. So that happens to be the social etiquette, words or phrases for invitation. So next is the occasion, KVS National Level Science Exhibition. So that happens, sorry, social science exhibition. That happens to be the name of the occasion. So I have date, time and venue. If I happen to put the venue here with with postal address format here. Suppose this particular venue is elsewhere, we could have an, an, a postal address for the school and a different postal address for the venue also. I cho always choose uh, to be in this pattern because I'm, I'm very sure in making my children to realize that they cannot have repetition because repetition in a language paper is a major sin, right? So if we write the address here and then again the address here next after the venue, it is definitely not acceptable. It's a definitely a huge mistake of repeating the same value point within the answer. So I always advise children to give the name of the school, comma, place, and pin code more than enough. And then we could add details in the venue. So ask the child to write uh, the address properly with the door number, road name, and the locality. So, so much for the first part of the invitation. The second part of the invitation is the name of the person and who is he. I have gone here with professional details. I have not included the educational details. My reason is I have space constraints on my page. So I tell the children, this is always better. It is always handy rather than stretching an entire line because an education, educational qualification can be written only next to the name. We can't write it below. So the child does not know to practice the layout. So this, these are small, these are certain nuances that we could share with them. So give the professional detail below the name. And then what is that person going to do? Will preside over the inaugural function and would and would judge and will judge the exhibition. So I have RSVP, RSVP. Below the RSVP, we have to write a number. RSVP, I think we all know what, what it means what it means. So response is mandatory. And then we have program overleaf on the right side. So this is a sample card type invitation where we draft invitations which require a chief guest or a resource person or uh, some eminent person to preside or conduct an event or the workshop. Any doubts here? Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. I would ask my children to write uh, their name also in the RSVP. Is that right? RSVP was Here it is given uh, the number alone. Yeah. But I usually instruct the children to write the name of the person. Not required, ma'am. RSVP is usually phone number and or email only. Give the name of the person and all. We are confusing the children to interpret notice question. This is not a notice question where we add other details. This is an invitation. So the rules of the invitation only needs to be applied. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yeah, thank you. This word also be added in the program overlay. Pardon, ma'am? Program overlay, that also be done? Yes, the... yes, that's a part of the format, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Can I? Yes, ma'am. 
yeah can i continue yes no. so we move on to the second type of card invitation where we have family functions so here also it is the exactly the same thing the only difference is we don't have the second sentence and we don't have program overleaf so these two things are replaced by something else so like the first sentence we have details of the host details of the occasion other details like refreshment dress code theme color because in a family function all these take priority too so that could be added so instead of program overleaf we advise the children to conclude the card with best compliments from friends and relatives so this is a sample question sorry yeah this is a sample question on behalf of mr sharma design an invitation in 50 words for his housewarming ceremony with all details so i have miss and mr sharma number 23 second street shakti nagar teach the children to use different font size to highlight the occasion to fabricate the answer using different fonts let them not sit and draw or paint or waste time in that right um so i have the name of the host on top and their address here right because because it is a housewarming ceremony so you might ask in my previous yeah in my previous thing i did not incorporate the address here i have incorporated here but in here it is housewarming ceremony so this address is different from this address and moreover this particular invitation is very very limited ma'am so we need to teach children how to reach that maximum word limit so this is one particular nuance that we could teach children so having the postal address and in in uh, along with the residential details and having a different venue so that we would be able to use a postal address for that particular purpose also so request the presence of you and your family now in my uh, do's and don'ts i told you for family functions yes you can use this kind of an expression second person you and your family is is acceptable here so to the housewarming ceremony date time venue and brunch at 11 am if i want i could add now this is a housewarming ceremony so i can't it, i felt it would not be appropriate to talk about theme party or a dress code but if it is a birthday celebration or if it is a surprise party celebration you could go with below brunch you could add color code dress code theme and all you could definitely incorporate so rsvp is again maintained here but instead of program overly we conclude with best compliments from friends and relatives so this is a second type of invitation that we have under card variety so just to sum up the card type we have two types of card invitations the first one happens to be uh, for organizational events where there is a need there is a mandate for chief guest the second one are all family functions any doubts with respect to family card type you know ma'am can we move on yes ma'am okay so the the second type of invitation that we are going to see on the formal invitations is letter type of invitation so card type of invitations are the ones that we um uh, that we basically uh, what do i say uh, do for people where there are a lot of people where a quite a crowd is going to be invited where you have a massive turnout but letter of invitation is addressed to an individual person it is basically in letter format a formal letter format the same thing right 50 word limit five marks the details of host occasion and request to preside or participate happens to be mentioned and you need also need to request for a positive reply at the earliest for you to make arrangements so these are the main content points so this is a format sample that i'm giving you so from the name and address of the host date and to name and address of the receiver subject will be letter of invitation we'll have the salutation sir or madam or dear sir or madam content should include the details of the host occasion what are they what why are you calling them do you want them to be the judge or do you want them to participate do you want them to preside so that you will have to mention and please ask for immediate reply and then conclude with complimentary close thanking you in anticipation yours sincerely please write your name and designation and of course rsvp is mandatory so this is the format so moving on to the next one example 3 letter type right so we saw two card type invitations this is the third type 
So we have the Social Science Club of your school is organizing a one day workshop for its members. Draft a letter of invitation to Mr. Verma, a famous historian to conduct the workshop. Invent necessary details in 50 words to the president of the Social Science Club. So when this is another thing that I wanted you all to, to remember also. When you give the first worksheet, let the worksheet questions be extensive. Provide all verbal inputs in your question. So the second worksheet has to be little minimum because the child has to know what type of question she has to answer and let her decide what are the inputs that she is supposed to incorporate. So this is the question and this is the answer. I've split up the answer because of its length and uh, proportion it, was, uh, it is occupying, but otherwise, the entire answer has to be written in a box only. Yes, of course, it might take more than one and a half sides. That is not a problem at all. So I have the from address, the president, Social Science Club, Spring Valley School, Landon's Road, Chennai 86. The date I have, professor's name, Department of History, Asian College of Arts and Science, number two, second cross street, Chennai 14. So I have the subject letter of invitation. And my content goes, dear sir, the Social Science Club of Spring Valley School, Chennai, takes immense pleasure in inviting Professor K.R. Verma, famous historian, to preside over the one-day workshop on the topic, Use of Weapons in Ancient Civilizations, organized by the Social Science Club on 14th June 2022 at the school auditorium from 10.30 a.m. onwards. If you look at the content so far, I have not changed anything except my style of writing. So whatever was the content prescribed in for the Cartite invitation stands valid. So who is the host? Social Science Club, Spring Valley School. So what is the occasion? Uh, we workshop on the topic use of weapons in Asian civilizations. When, where, time. So all those details have given. But who is going to be invited? Professor K.R. Verma. So I'm incorporating everything in one single sentence. If you want, if the child finds it a little difficult, yes, you can break it into two or three. It is absolutely acceptable. So we conclude the answer asking for a positive reply at the earliest. So as usual, complimentary close. Thanking you, yours sincerely, Ms. Asha Kumar, President, Social Service Club, RSVP, mandatory. Any doubts with the letter type? The letter has to be in third person only. Kindly do not encourage the child to say, I, the president of Spring Valley School, would like you, would, li would like to invite you. No, that expression is not allowed. Let's not entertain the child. Of course, in the board exam, if they write, yes, there is a penalty and marks are given. Probably for five marks, the child might get somewhere around two or two and a half. So let's, right from day one, let us be very firm with our children in making them to learn what is formal and informal expression. So I think there we need to uh, put, our, put our foot down and uh, teach children to write the exact way as expected. Any doubts with the three varieties of card type invitations, card and letter type formal invitation? Excuse me, ma'am. Letter of invitation is enough or they have to mention anything ma'am here? Letter no, no. For the subject. You're asking for the subject. Ah, yeah, yes. Ma Not required, ma'am. Letter of invitation is more than enough. Because it is short writing task, 50 words. If you put it here and then we need, we have to say a four mention. Because in writing skills, repetition is definitely to be avoided. Yes. Kindly mute your mic, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any doubts so far? Teachers? No doubt. No. Thank you. So we'll move on to the next category, replies to formal invitation. So we have two types of replies, acceptance and denial. So the general instructions are very simple. The format is same as letter of invitation. So maximum word limit 50, all replies have to be drafted within a box. So these are general instructions, standard instructions. They never change at all, right? So let's see the value points for acceptance. Ma'am, when, when teachers, when I say the format is same as letter of invitation, so we have from date to address, subject, salutation, content, and complimentary close. So what are the basic changes alone I've given here? 
under the content uh, uh, input what i have done is i have given the fluency of the answer to so that because here in cbsc expression i i think uh, the mark split is one mark for format two for content and two for expression i'll be telling you when i give the evaluation i'll be telling you under what uh, parameters we are going to avoid marks for expression fluency or in other words coherency is a very important factor so uh, with with that as my aim i have put the content also in the same fluent manner that the child is supposed to right the answer the content is this is acceptance isn't it so first is whether it is acceptance or denial first is to acknowledge that we have received the invitation so when it is acceptance let us acknowledge along with acceptance because that helps in sentence structure we have to definitely mention who is the host what is the occasion details of the occasion conclude with best wishes so we will have to we will have to give our name and designation same thing with denial so denial acknowledge that you have received the invitation add on the details of host and uh, occasion then you will have to formally tell what is the reason for your denial for not accepting the invitation wish them the best for the event and conclude with name and designation so i have a sample question for acceptance so you are ms asha kumar a leading fitness consultant you received a letter of invitation from the student council of spring valley public school pune 12 to judge an inter school aerobics competition next month draft a suitable letter of acceptance for the same in 50 words so i have the from address i have the date i have the to address i have my subject letter of acceptance any issues there are you able to get it excuse me teachers Yes, no. There is no issue. So I have my I have my salutation, and I I have my acknowledgement put in a different way. Extremely honored to accept. So the first line itself, I'm telling I am accepting the invitation to judge the inter school aerobics competition. So that is the name of the occasion, and who is the host organized by the Spring Valley Public School Pune, right? On the twenty fourth May. So date. time and the school at the school premises venue is all is also to be mentioned wishing all success for the program yours truly ms asha kumar right we don't we don't have to sign uh, yours sincerely yours faithfully yours truly is a very simple complimentary close no thanking you is required here just yours truly ms asha kumar no rsvp no other conditions to be incorporated here so when you when you see replies to invitations are very simple and straightforward easy to learn when we tell the children when we when you give this kind of inputs to your children they will know exactly what they can they are supposed to write for questions like these so this is the sample acceptance any issue with acceptance do you have any doubts or can i carry on with denial no doubt so this is a denial sample i have incorporated the same question same input the only difference is this is a denial so the subject happens to be letter of denial i have i have i have clearly stated i i incorporated the same style just to identify what exactly is the difference so comparative study makes it easy for us it's so extremely honor to receive there it was to accept so here it is to receive the invitation to judge the inter school aerobics competition again organized by the name of the host date time and venue deeply regret to decline the invitation due to prior commitments prior commitments is very simple right but yet very very formal so we need not tell i'm going out of station i'm 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 not well and all because prior commitments makes it very very formal in expression i have other commitments probably or late in asking me so i cannot give you that time that sort of an expression perfectly acceptable explanation for denying the invitation sorry declining the invitation so wishing all success for the program yours truly ms asha kumar any doubts no ma'am so we will move on to the next type informal invitation so, so far we covered formal invitations next is informal informal 
it is completely different in format, style, and expression. So always, probably today we have a workshop. Hi, it comes under one topic, so I do it. But I would suggest when you do formal invitations and formal replies, take a break, go to a prose text, finish a prose lesson or finish a poetry, give an extended, uh, uh, extended uh, worksheet. Extended worksheet is as, I mean, every day probably two, two questions you could give so that they could work on different types of questions. And probably as and when you finish the next prose topic, then bring in the informal invitation. So please do not uh, do formal and informal invitations at a stretch. It would definitely confuse children. So let them know their basics strong because this is not a second level or a second step. This is completely, it's a totally different step. So let them know the difference between the two types of invitations. So the purpose of drafting an informal invitation is to invite very close friends and relatives so we could have a housewarming ceremony. There could be a wedding card type that we had already done. But the point here is for a function, I want to personally invite my friend, my aunt, my grandmother. So I would like, generally we do that, isn't it? We add a small note to the card invitation. That's exactly the purpose of writing informal invitation. So the tone has to be very relaxed and personal. So usage of first and second person is allowed here. Just because it is informal, colloquial or slang-like expressions definitely cannot be included. Please avoid the letter style. Letter style in the sense, hi, how are you? That efficacy cannot be expressed here because even though they are in letter format, remember they are not letters, they are basically invitations. So 50 words within a box, all those things stands applicable. So the mark allotment is the usual format, one mark, content, two marks expression two marks. So you have the from address in brief. You have a sample there. I'm just giving you the format like how I had given for the other invitations also. So dear ABC, begin with a friendly or a personal expression. Mention what is the occasion, the details of the occasion, request the guest to respond to the invite and conclude. So you need to conclude with saying, not with love, yours affectionately and all, because those are the complimentary close that you do for personal letters. This is an invitation. So you conclude with regards PQR. So ABC and PQR are alphabets that, which means that fictitious names have to be incorporated if the question does not give any other detail. So your Ankit or Ankita invite your friend to your housewarming ceremony in 50 words. So I, I took up a similar sample because we did a housewarming ceremony in the card type invitation. So I'm using the same input here, but I am I am I want to send a personal invite to my particular friend. So I have the address on top, number 12, Terrace Garden Road, Nasik 34, 16th May 22. Dear Rashmi, I'm so happy to invite you to my housewarming ceremony. Look at this time. So I'm so happy. That is a personal thing. So glad to see you could even start with expressions. I have good news for you. Let's meet, let's party. Time for us to see each other, to meet each other. Let's let's gear up to see each other. Such kind of expressions bring in that personal style. Clearly teach your children not to have the letter type of expressions. Hi, how are you? Definitely needs to be avoided. I'm so happy to invite you to my housewarming ceremony on 14th June 2022 at number three, Anunag Gated Community, Wallace Street, Nasik 21 from 7 a.m. onwards. I'll be glad to have you here and share my joy on the special day. Do let me know your arrival. Regards, Ankit. Any doubts? No, ma'am. So like how we had uh, invitations and formal, invitation, formal invitations and replies, we have replies to informal invitations. They are uh, just like formal invitations. There are two types acceptance and denial and the uh, the format for informal replies is exactly the same as informal invitation itself mark allotment word limit language expression uh, all the rules are applicable here also so this is the set of value points acknowledge the invite received mention date time date tv so you you can actually see the the similarity between formal acceptance and form informal acceptance and as the same is, is in the case of denial too except the format happens to format and expression happens to be the change so 
there is absolutely no no change here at all so acknowledge the invite there you acknowledge the invite here you will mention that you are coming here you are going to tell whether you are unwell because we can't say i have prior commitments it is your own friend you are talking to so you need to say what exactly are your commitments are you traveling or you sick whatever is the reason needs to be mentioned unlike our a formal denial so this is a sample question i have taken the same situation so that it will help us to compare and learn so your friend ankita had invited you for your house warming for her house warming thing respond favorably in 50 words so i have my address i have my date dear ankita i'm so happy to know that you have been blessed with a new house i'll be there on 14th june 22 at uh, uh, number 3 anurag so if you are going to ask me ma'am is all these details like date time when you are mandatory yes they are mandatory it helps us with uniform evaluation so please insist children always come up with this particular question ma'am why ma'am we already know no ma'am why should we write it but this is social etiquette give them the right answer this is social etiquette when we respond whether it is informal or formal invitation there are basic etiquettes manners that we have to maintain so that is why we need to confirm it is in a way telling that this is what you told me i hope my details are right so that's that's another trick that that happens to be effective here when we repeat the thing and uh, tell the children that it's an individual question so we are not going to give you the previous question and all so tell the children to answer it in a in a technical way I'm eager to share your joy on that special day. God bless. Regards, Rashmi. So that's the sample for acceptance. The same. Um, uh, sorry, sam sample for denial. So you are mightily you received an invite from your friend's mother for a surprise party for her daughter's success in her medical entrance exam. Reply to the invitation and express your inability. So I have the address date. Dear Aunt Meera, congratulations! So happy and excited to know Anusha's success in medical entrance exam. It's great that you have arranged a surprise party for her on 14th June at Hotel Green Park, Hamilton Road, Mumbai, 54, from 7:30 p.m. onwards. But I will not be able to make it as I have already made travel plans with my parents. Please do wish her on my behalf. Enjoy. Regards, Michael. Even if you are not coming, the details of the occasion and Oh, other things have to be mentioned, even in the case of a denial invitation. So I'll stop there. Do you have any queries related to informal and informal invitations and respective replies? Teachers. so answer key and evaluation like i have very clearly told you that the mark split up is uh, for uh, 1 plus 2 plus 2 so 1 is for format if you are going to take the format of a card type invitation what is the format the format is the box right we have a condition and then we have program overly but there is this probably you could a lot half a mark for that if you are going to ask me uh, so how much is the mark allotted for the box how much is the mark allotted for condition how much is the mark allotted for program overly no we have to use a discretion to to evaluate there are no hard and fast rules here but as a teacher when we evaluate an answer we know that we cannot give full mark to a particular answer so that is what i mean by using our discretion so the child is attempted in a very neat way because when it comes to card type invitation presentation is definitely an important part of it if the child is going to write the entire invitation like a notice or like a paragraph writing definitely marks cannot be given for the format so in that way we have to be very careful in allotting marks for format for card type invitation when it comes to in replies or letter type of invitation or informal invitation or replies to informal invitation that is the rest of the variety yes we do have to see the format whether the address is written properly whether the most of the time in format what children do is they start giving this the description of the receiver for example in my question uh, it says a famous historian but you cannot write professor k r sharma famous historian in postal address because that is a description 
for that particular person. It is not a designation. So such kind of factual errors can be marked out and mark could be reduced. So if the format is wrong, reduce in format. Go to the content. The content basically I've shown you slides, right? Suppose if you're going to ask me, I'll just rush through one content for, yeah. Suppose I'm taking this particular thing. So this is the content point. So the child is acknowledged the invitation received as she mentioned the occasion, date and time, and many of the occasion as she incorporated that she has accepted it. And as she concluded, with, concluded the invitation with warm wishes, then give to. In case if anything is missing, reduce accordingly. So this is the content. So if the format is not there, you're reducing it in the format. Please do not reduce, penalize the child again in content too. For the content, these are the value points. If you're going to still ask me, I can, yeah, this is the content for informal invitations. So this is how we need to do that. So for this one mark, the from address, date, salutation, and complimentary close, and the box is what I'm looking at. But for the content, beginning, I have to have, uh, I have to have a personal expression, the occasion, date, time, venue, request the guest to respond and conclude. So that is the content. If all these things are there, give two marks. Suppose one is missing, reduce accordingly. What do I do for expression? Expression is basically divided into two parameters. One, grammatical accuracy, two, fluency. So one mark, grammatical accuracy, is the tense right? Is the spelling right? So probably, right? Suppose I, I am so happy to, to have invited you. If the child has written to have invited you, yes, grammatically wrong. To our housewarming ceremony, when the child says I and then the child says are, yes, that is wrong. So underline that, right? So anyways, you cannot give zero to the child because one is the one mark is the maximum mark we can give for grammatical accuracy. So spot the errors and let the child, if you're, if you're going to do that uh, identification of errors during, let them revise. That is what yesterday's class I told you. This peer correction helps a lot, especially in writing skills. We have a standard format and content here. So ask the children to exchange, identify each other's mistakes. And when they present you a worksheet, probably say five or 10 questions, the number of basic errors would definitely be reduced. And when we identify them, when we correct the worksheet and give it back to them, then the rest is assured. They know where to where we are making a mistake. I can, I can, I can vouch in that way. If there is one mistake in question one, the same mistake will be till the next questions. In the next question, till the tenth question, you will find the same mistake. So please see that particular uh, part of it also. Fine. So that is what is the first one mark for expression. The second one mark is fluency. So fluency is the construction of points one below the other. So for this particular question, this is the fluency. We have to begin with their personal expression, then talk about occasion, then talk about details of the occasion and request the guest to respond and conclude. They can't request, they can't start the answer with requesting, with a request uh, uh, for the guest to respond to the invite. So fluency structure is the second parameter that we will have to look into. Fine. So answer key in evaluation, like I had pointed out yesterday, identify the errors, circle them, tell them where they are losing their marks. So when you give and when you make an evaluation based on the three parameters, format, expression, and content, the child will be able to understand where he or she is losing mark or marks and would be able to rectify his or her mistakes later. So this is something that is very, very important. And another major thing that I want to discuss uh, here is the answer key. Answer key as such is when you suppose you give a question, for example, right? This is this yellow part of the slide is your question. Your question says, your friend Ankita has had sent you, had sent you her housewarming invitation, respond favorably. Now this is a question you're giving. So the format is from address, date, uh, salutation and conclusion. So, and box. So five value, five pointers for format. Write that. Format hyphen from address, date, salutation, conclusion and box. One mark. The second content. First thing is acknowledgement. Second one, details of the host. Uh, sorry, the de uh, details of the occasion. Third one, acceptance. 
fourth one conclusion so these are the four points that the child should have in her content right so give your answer key you when 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 you give a when you give a set of assignment provide them an answer key initially when initially when we do this work i can tell you rest of the year we can relax aram say we can actually do our work but if you are not going to do our work initially we can't expect the child to do magic or miracle at the end of the terminal exam so our answer key is the main pointer for the child kindly draft prepare your answer key in an effective way so that the child does not refer to any guide or refresher material i i can i can very clearly tell you as language teachers i don't think we should recommend any particular guide because cbc does not have any particular person to prepare or write guides so in, in, in we could probably refer to any sample materials available in cbc website i would i would appreciate that but otherwise we can make our own assignment sheets we can prepare our keys for that so that before the exam the child knows what he or she is supposed to write in an answer so preparing the answer key is definitely a very important part of whether it is an uh, assignment or weekend assignment or whatever it is it is definitely important for us to give a clear cut answer key that helps the child to identify three things the first thing is the format the second thing the content points and third thing the fluency in the answer the child should be taught by uh, should be taught to identify what is the fluency of the answer to so without showing these three parameters in your answer key whether the whether uh, answer key means i always use this particular word where i have to give guidelines for my children whether it is an assignment sheet or it is a question paper so if you are going to have this practice during the initial stages the rest is rectified i'll tell you i can i this is with with my own personal experience when you when you do the basic suppose for notice writing you teach you give such kind of answer key explanation the child understands that every writing skill every prose question needs to have proper content points to be written structured with coherency that enters into his or her head so it works wonders initially probably For the first one or two months, we have to struggle. Then it becomes a cakewalk. Excuse me. 